from Hollywood to your hometown, this is Celebrity Page TV. We're keeping you informed on everything happening in the world of entertainment. I'm Sonia Isabel coming to you from our New York City newsroom. And I'm James Vaughn working remotely, keeping you covered on the West Coast. Here's what's on today's episode. As summer officially arrives, things are heating up on reality TV. From the steamy beaches of Siesta Key to the hot homes on Million Dollar Listing LA, we're talking with the stars of the newest reality releases. Plus, they're three of the busiest people in Hollywood. Meet the trio breaking barriers during Pride Month and all year long. We're so glad you're with us, so let's kick things off with the Hollywood Wrap. If you want to be one of the top teams at the competition, you have to step it up. The hit Netflix series Cheer is at the top of the pyramid at this year's Critics' Choice Real TV Awards. The show honoring the best in reality television. Cheer leading the pack with five nominations, including Best Unstructured Reality Series. Netflix ahead of all other platforms and networks with 31 nominations. RuPaul's Drag Race tying with Cheer for five nods, including Best Competition Series. And Survivor host Jeff Probst being single out with the Real TV Impact Award, he's also up for Best Host. For a full list of nominees, head to CelebrityPage.com and we'll find out who wins June 29th. You've chosen to bring to light women of hope, determination, of grit, and grace because that is who you are. A special tribute for Hollywood icon Cicely Tyson, the Oscar nominee now honored by the Peabody Awards with this year's Career Achievement Award. Oprah Winfrey, just one of the stars celebrating Miss Tyson's groundbreaking career in film and television. If you have racist beliefs, if you have a, a, a racist bone in your body, if you're not with me, if you don't stand with me and people that look like me, then you don't need to be with me. <laughs> Michael B. Jordan using the protests over George Floyd's death as a challenge to Hollywood. The star calling on studios to cut financial ties with police departments and instead to hire private security. Jordan also urging talent agencies and production companies to invest in black staff. Always remember to put others' needs above your own fears. Meghan Markle speaking out in a virtual commencement address to her former high school in Los Angeles. Meghan using the speech to support the protesters and to encourage the class of 2020 to make positive change. You're missing every color if you're only seeing black and white. And country star Kane Brown, just one of the artists releasing new music addressing racial inequality. His new song, Worldwide Beautiful, also raising money for the Boys and Girls Club of America. And that's today's Hollywood Wrap. Well, the summer isn't the only thing heating up. So is the drama on MTV's reality show, Siesta Key. Hollywood insider Arthur Kane is talking to the cast all about season three. Siesta Key gang, welcome back. And another great season ahead. Tell me all about it. It's gonna be a crazy season. The first episode kicks off with a huge gala and things kind of just get out of control from the get-go. You can kind of see the end of the first half of season three, how everything's starting to get really, really convoluted and the drama is really escalating and then you kind of see like the peak at the beginning of the season so you just can't miss it. You know Chloe oh, betrayed Julia. me. Hey, Julia. You know. Yeah. 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 What's your reaction as you watch yourself going through these incredibly crazy motions in front of millions of people? When I got the finale, we were actually, a big group of us were together and I was not okay. I'm really stressed out about what's coming. This was a really hard season. Yeah, this was a tough season for me, for sure. Garrett's tough season due in part to his ongoing mental health struggles. Uh, I've always kind of had like anxiety and stuff like that, filming and all that on top of it, and just the drama and stuff. It just, it just put me in a weird spot. I had to like push through all of that this season. Watch Garrett and the rest of the cast journey on Siesta Key, Tuesdays on MTV. For Celebrity Page, I'm Arthur Cade. And since we're talking reality TV, the Bravo hit million dollar listing Los Angeles is also back. Today we're chatting with star realtor Josh Flagg for this reality reel. I always wanted my name in the sky. The plane, the plane. The OG is bringing the heat. It's an offer, Flagg, we don't have any. I'm telling you, 
He's not gonna do it. Josh Flagg pulling out all the stops for season 12. I feel like this season's gonna be better than most seasons. Most of the seasons are great and I, they get better every year. And I say that every year, but they just keep going. And we're also still on the air now forever. I thought when Seinfeld went off the air, that was like, a you know, it was eight years and that was impressive. And this time around, we see two rivals become allies. Altman and I have such different styles, but both of us would do anything for a buck. Absolutely. Okay. The problem is that we're so similar, which is why we always go head to head but I just do a little bit, uh, I'm a little bit more refined. Bam. With Frederick Eklund from New York now joining the LA crew, new alliances will be formed. Very friendly with him. I, I'm happy that he's here. Probably would guess that Josh Altman is not gonna like it. You don't exist here. I protected you through so many, sit down. You were my friend, it's bullshit. And even during the pandemic, Josh staying in touch with co-star Tracy Tudor. We're just really close friends and we're neighbors and we just, you know, we hang out all the time. Uh, we came a lot closer this year. The new season kicking off during Pride Month and Josh proud to represent the LGBTQ community on screen. Actually, I don't think I was really out on TV until maybe the first three or four seasons. If I can do anything to help or change people's lives, it's great. Million Dollar Listing Los Angeles airs Tuesday nights on Bravo. Time now to check in with Soap Opera Digest editorial director Stephanie Sloan for the latest daytime headlines. Hey, Stephanie, good to see you again. And let's start with Father's Day. This is your special issue celebrating dads. And you talk with some daytime stars about being fathers. What did they share? Bold and Beautiful's Torsten K tells us the most challenging thing about fatherhood is knowing he's going to have to send his two daughters into the world someday. Days of Our Lives as Galen Gehring says that his ideal Father's Day gift is the cards he gets from his kids and just doing something fun with them. General Hospital's Wally Kurtz says he embarrasses his kids when he tries to sing the lyrics to a current song and messes them up. And Young and Restless's Doug Davidson says the best thing about fatherhood is watching your children blossom. And you also look at some of our favorite soap opera dads of all time. Days of Our Lives is Eric Martzoff says his favorite TV dad is his TV dad. It's John Black, played by Drake Hogeson. Eric says he can't think of any other soap father who was a priest and performed an exorcism. Bold and Beautiful's Don Diamant picks his alter ego, Bill. He says Bill may not be dad of the year, but it's clear that he loves his sons. And Young and Restless's Brighton James says it was Neil Winters, played by the late Christoph St. John. Brighton says Christoph guided him and treated him like family does. All right, sounds great. Thanks so much, Stephanie. We'll be sure to check out the latest issue of Soap Opera Digest. So to come on Celebrity Page TV, from reality to comedy to late night, we've got all the brand new shows you'll be adding to your binge list next on Celebrity Page TV. Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi. On the next Celebrity Page TV, the new adventure Padma Lakshmi's Cooking Up. Plus, Jerry Bruckheimer. Big stars, big Hollywood. Celebrity Page TV. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Welcome back to Celebrity Page TV. It's time to dish about all the newest movies and shows to watch and stream this week. What's your next stop? Kind of just let the road tell me where to go. More new films are going straight to digital, including the short history of The Long Road. Sabrina Carpenter stars as a teenage girl in search of the mother she never knew. It's available on demand now. Babies are not even two yet, and we are already in the trenches of terrible twos. It's the show that may just help you appreciate the simplicity of your own life. Sweet Home Sex Tuplets returns for a new season Tuesdays on TLC. Oh, man, it feels so good to be back together. Who's excited? Who else? <laughs> History class was never so fun. Mr. Iglesias is back for season two on Netflix. The comedy starring Gabriel Iglesias is streaming now. 
Now I'm heading back to the Northern Great Plains where I grew up to learn more about an area I thought I understood. Couldn't we all use a good road trip right now? YouTube star Emily Grassley is taking us back in time to study fossils on prehistoric road trip Wednesdays on PBS. Wait, I don't think this is the quicksand. Oh wait, it is, I'm sinking. Come on in, feels great. The new streaming service HBO Max continues to roll out new content, including a fresh season of the animated show Summer Camp Island and a new kids competition series called Karma. Both drop June 18th on HBO Max. There are enemies, but they don't know that. Also dropping on June 18th is the second season of The Order. The part magic, part horror series is streaming on Netflix. What's cuter, Baby Yoda? or a baby Miyagi. <laughs> and celebrities show off their inner geek on the new series, The Great Debate. Watch the stars argue over the burning questions in pop culture fandom. New episodes air Thursdays on Sci-Fi. For more ideas on what to watch, head to CelebrityPage.com. Happy viewing, that's today's dish. As we celebrate Pride Month, we're focusing on three of the hottest producers in Hollywood. Lena Waithe, Ryan Murphy, and Greg Berlanti are not only breaking barriers for the queer community, but they're also sharing stories that have never been told before. So evidently there's a videotape with some footage of you using an offensive gay slur. Do you have any idea what I might be referring to? Just how busy are Lena, Ryan, and Greg? This Pride Month, all three are attached to big new releases. I want you all to hold your hands high. I know change will come to Chicago. Lena's critically acclaimed series, The Shy, is back for its third season on Showtime starting June 21st. Peyton's possibly a homosexual. Astrid is a raging bigot. Ryan Murphy is releasing season two of his series, The Politician, June 19th on Netflix. My story is confusing. Some guys like guys, some guys like girls, some guys like both. I'm not even sure what I like. And over on Hulu, June 17th marks the premiere of the new series, Love, Victor, which is based on the 2018 hit film, Love, Simon, which was directed by Greg. I really identify with the story. It made me have all the usual emotions that a great love story does, but then the fact that it was a teen protagonist who happened to be gay. Nobody knows I'm gay. And I'm an openly gay person myself, and I wished that I had had a film like this. Greg, quite possibly the busiest man in television, producing nearly 20 shows, including Doom Patrol, which comes to HBO Max on June 25th. There's also All American and Riverdale, plus the CW Supergirl and Batwoman, and not to mention the smash Netflix hit You. Nothing is okay without you, love. The only man who might be busier than Greg is Ryan. The Emmy goes to Ryan Murphy. Ryan also a one-man media empire with hit series like 911 and American Horror Story, Pose, and Hollywood. I feel that television can change the world, and I think that we've seen it happen, and I think it's true. And not to be outdone is fellow Emmy winner Lena Waithe. And last but certainly not least, my LGBTQTIA family. I see each and every one of you. Breaking barriers with TV shows such as Boomerang and 20s, Lena talking with Celebrity Page TV earlier this year. There's not a lot of women look that look like me in the business and so I'm gonna take some hits I'm gonna take some licks and you know when you're the first through the brick wall you're gonna get bruised you're gonna get cuts but I'll happily take them a lot of people did that for me and so I'm happy to do it again so that way it's easy for other folks that come behind me so as we mark Pride Month we celebrate these three prolific artists each helping to make Hollywood a more inclusive place to work and watch Top Gun transformed the way Americans viewed the military and made superstars of Meg Ryan, Val Kilmer, and Tom Cruise, to name a few. Well, this week, Reel sits down with the cast and crew on Behind Closed Doors to learn the secrets behind the blockbuster action movie. Celebrity Page has your exclusive first look. Charlie Sheen came over to my house, and he's like, there's this movie Top Gun, and it's like, really great, and you got it. I was like, okay. I mean, everybody that was a young guy wanted to be in it, you know? You hear Cruise is attached, and you know, it's like, yeah. It's, it's one to get. Tony asked me to tell a story, and I I don't know why. Something told me it would be appropriate to tell a really inappropriate joke, and it was really bad. When I got through with this joke, they all laughed, but then I walked out, and I remember looking at Michael Ironside, and he said, so how did it go? And I said, I don't know why I just did what I did. I mean, it was really a bad joke, and I got the job. We auditioned a lot of guys for the role of Goose, and Tony and I loved Anthony Edwards for this part. And when I went in to tell Don Simpson, he was furious, and he started really screaming at me that this part was about humor, and uh, he needed a funny guy. This was the comedic part, and he needed a funny guy for that part, and why didn't I understand that? And I screamed back, 
This is what matters about this character. You just have to care when he dies. And you're not gonna care when one of those comics die, and you're gonna care when Tony dies. We'll be watching for more as Natalie Morales hosts Top Gun Behind Closed Doors Sunday night on Reels. Time for more hot headlines in the Celebrity Page feed. Here's our social producer, Ricky Cornish. With so many amazing TV shows out right now, TNT is bringing the heat Sunday nights with its new hit, Snowpiercer, based on the graphic novel and 2013 film. Once you pass through that door, there's no turning back. Nashville correspondent Sam Alex chatting with series co-star Jalen Fletcher on his breakout role in the hit show. Let's start with uh, Snowpiercer. And, and TNT, what can people expect with this? You can expect a lot. Like there's a lot happens in one episode and then they have a lot more to like back it up. There was ice everywhere. I was slipping and sliding, trying to get into the car. Never forget who you are. A tally. Jalen also reflecting on his time working with the incredible cast. I think every experience I've had on set was like, like really amazing and I never wanted to leave set. Catch Snowpiercer Sundays on TNT and for more stories, head to our website at celebritypage.com. <laughs> Back to Celebrity Page TV. Today we're checking in with Ranker.com for a look at the new season of The Shy on Showtime and what else is watchworthy. Showtime's original drama, The Shy, is coming back for a third season on June 21st. The show has gotten tons of praise for its complex, intertwining stories about growing up black in Chicago and is a major hit with TV fans, ranking as the number one recent TV show that deals primarily with the black experience in America. Watchworthy is here to recommend some shows that fans of The Shy are statistically more likely to love. One show that The Shy fans are more likely to find watchworthy is Snowfall, the FX historical drama created by the great great director John Singleton. This drama is Boys in the Hood's director's attempt to tell the story of the crack cocaine epidemic from its very beginning in the early 1980s. There's a fourth season set to premiere later this year. Another show that tends to share a lot of fans with the shy is Grownish, the spinoff of the wildly popular sitcom Blackish that follows the eldest Johnson daughter as she heads off to college. It also features familiar faces from Blackish, including Anthony Anderson, Lawrence Fishburne, and Dion Cole. Finally, there's Boomerang. The show follows daughter of Marcus and Angela Graham and the son of Jacqueline Boyer as they work to step out of the shadow of their parents. It's a sitcom that celebrates the massive social changes that have taken place over the last 28 years while also managing to find humor in them. And it's eight times more likely to be loved by fans of The Shy. Watchworthy has way more recommendations for The Shy fans that we've covered here, including Atlanta, Ballers, and This Is Us. But we don't have enough time to cover them all, so download the Watchworthy app to find out what shows are most likely to be worthy of your precious free time. Somebody feed Phil host Phil Rosenthal is busier than ever. He just dropped a new season of the hit Netflix series and he's helping to raise money for people struggling in Hollywood. Here's today's shout out for a cause with BJ Koros. Even in a difficult time, Phil Rosenthal is still putting smiles on people's faces. These are my life decisions, too. The popular TV producer recently celebrating the release of his third season of the Netflix hit Somebody Feed Phil. But I want people to watch the show, not sadly and thinking, oh, look how the world used to be. But we all know that this will end and we will be able to go again. So use this time to plan. Phil also using his talents to support the Motion Picture and Television Fund, organizing a virtual fundraiser called We All Play Our Part. I believe that we need to care for these people because of the joy they've given us in our lives and just because they're human beings. And so that's what this is about. It goes beyond just the motion picture and television fund. It goes into 
caring for our elders. And he's got a strong supporting cast with George Clooney and Kris Jenner each playing their parts too. We can't thank them enough for their courage, for making this home such a special place. It is our home. And it's important for all of us to know that when they say we all play our part, they really mean it. The night even calling for a special reunion from Phil's beloved sitcom, Everybody Loves Raymond. Ray Romano and Brad Garrett joining the TV legend to have a little fun and raise some money. We're lucky enough not to need it yet, but we may and we know people in good form who do, who do use it and, and it's very valuable for them. For more about MPTF, visit us at celebritypage.com. When we come back, class is in session. The history lesson we all need next on Celebrity Page TV. Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? Because he was a fun guy. <laughs> what do you call a pig that knows karate? Pork chop. Uh, 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 uh. Um, so, how does a tissue dance? Put a little boogie on it. <laughs> Queen is just my everything. His smile did it. His smile, his eyes, his knowledge. My landlord, he decided that he wanted me to move based on the fact that I was transgender. Let's just respect people in everyday life for just being human. Welcome back to Celebrity Page TV. February may be Black History Month, but June 19th or Juneteenth is the day set aside to mark the end of slavery. Now both events are being celebrated in a spectacular way. Here's today's hot trailer. Hey there, cats and kittens. With us, Mr. John, legend John. It's good to see you, brother. Huge fan. You brought me here for Black History Month. We're not even talking about black history. You know Let about. me tell you about what I know about black history. Right. Limiting black history to just February isn't enough. So now AMC and IFC are bringing it to the summer on their sketch show, Sherman Showcase, featuring lots of famous faces, music, and plenty of laughs. I'm Dracula, not Blackula. I think y'all slick with that Blackula stuff. I see it. Who wrote that? Duke uh, Ellington? My brother, Drake Ellington. <gasps> we couldn't afford Drake. Isn't there anyone who knows what Black History Month is all about? Being black has more than just knowing the difference between Jesse Williams and Michael Ely. What the hell, man? So check out Sherman's Showcase Black History Month Spectacular premiering June 19th on AMC and IFC and streaming at amc.com. Looks like a great show. Well, that's going to do it for us, for James Vaughn and the entire Celebrity Page team. I'm Sonia Isabel. Thanks so much for watching, and we hope to see you back here tomorrow.